Hello there, my fellow mercenaries, and welcome back to your weekly dose of Battletech lore. Recently, I introduced to you, as part of our famous character series, an individual slash organization known simply as the Bounty Hunter. We didn't describe any particular individuals who used the persona last time, because I wanted to make another video about it now. So today I'm gonna narrate to you the stories of some of these individuals. Stories that are equally packed with action as they are with cloak and dagger. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Following the end of the Fourth Succession War, the identity of the Bounty Hunter passed to one Mishi no Ketsuna, in his quest for vengeance against the warlord Grieg Samsonov, for the betrayal of Minobu Tetsuhara and the Wolves Dragoons. For that particular event you can watch my Wolves Dragoon videos to learn more. How Nogetsuna claimed the identity is not known, but there are suggestions that either he met the previous bounty hunter and his associate Vic Travers at some point during the Fourth Succession War, or that the Dragoons killed the previous bounty hunter and then gave the identity and the equipment to Noketsuna. Noketsuna's career as the new bounty hunter was undertaken with the Dragoon's blessing either way, and with the assistance of Deshaun Fraser and Jeanette Rand from mid-3028 and onward. Accompanied by Vic Travers, Deshaun Fraser and Jeanette Rand, Noketsuna embarked on his quest for vengeance under the bounty hunter identity. On the 10th of January 3030, he and Fraser delivered the head of Greek Samsonov to Tomiho Tetsuhara, the widow of Minobu. But she however refused the gift, and suggested her late husband's father might appreciate it more. Although, as it turned out, not even Minoru Tetsuhara approved of Noketsuna's vendetta. On the 8th of October 3030, Noketsuna and his team ambushed one agent Panati, whom Noketsuna held responsible for the bombing of Barlow's End, which had maimed Minobu Tetsuhara, in the city of Deber on Benjamin. Incidentally, they also captured none other than Fyodor Kurita too. He accepted Noketsuna's claim for vendetta and allowed him to kill Panati, and then recruited Noketsuna to help protect the Draconis Combine from the nascent Federated Commonwealth. On that night, Noketsuna turned over the bounty hunter identity, mech, armor, and log to his landsmate Vic Travers, while Deshaun Fraser and Rand decided to follow Kurita into service with the Draconis Combine. Another character who inherited the bounty hunter persona was one Walt Eurisman. This man, known as Walt Eurisman, a name which was implied to be a false one because he had numerous other aliases, including Bjorn Thomas, Barry Whitmore, and Jack Love Roberts, was born in the year 3029 on Torrance. He had an exceptional technical education, and he took to the stars with the armed forces of the Federated Commonwealth as a battle mech technician. After the end of his five-year tour in 3055, he took a salvage clan mech into mercenary service. He briefly worked for a couple of mercenary outfits and cemented a reputation as a technician able to keep even the most mauled battle mechs in action. His mech would eventually be shot from under him during Operation Bird Dog, and shortly afterwards he turned up as a personal technician to the bounty hunter himself, a place he still held more than a decade later in 3068, when he was piloting a cauldron born. Once entering the Bounty Hunter's patronage, in that case it was still Vic Travers, he began excelling at field operations and served as a flexible and personal contact for the diverse range of government, mercenary, criminal and nobility with whom the Bounty Hunter dealt. It was believed, and rightly so, that Walt was being groomed as Travers' replacement, with his combat skills coming a long way from his earlier days. And so, by 3072, the guy did take over after Vic Travers. In the employ of Chandra Sekar Kurita, seemingly under a long-term contract, he tracked down Victoria Pardo on the world of Dalton to obtain her journal, entangled with one Spectre presenter Sigma Berif over that possession. Over the course of that mission, the bounty hunter found that his associate, Robert Farrell, 
had been unwittingly bugged by Bereth in order to follow him, and for a lack of better options at the time, killed him. Still in the employ of Kurita, the bounty hunter was present on Arcturus for Operation Higashikuni, where he was instrumental in saving his employer from a word of Blake attack in 3073. Although Kurita had assembled a mercenary coalition on Arcturus in preparation for a strike, a powerful Word of Blake task force attacked him on 11th of May 3073, with the intent of killing Kurita and reclaiming the journal. The attack met stiff resistance, but could have succeeded had the bounty hunter not used a double to get Kurita and himself out of the way. The next incarnation was a man named Mishi Fraser, and there was solid indication that those names were fake. The usage of these two names does indicate a strong knowledge of the history of the bounty hunter persona, as it references two important elements of it, Mishi no Ketsuna and Deshaun Fraser. What can be verified, however, was his appearance on the world of misery during the battle between the Combine and the Federated Sons in late 3030. Literally stealing a legionnaire battle mech from the commander of the Onworld Federated Sons garrison, he single-handedly defeated an entire lance of Kuritan troops afterwards. Immediately he went into hiding, but reappeared a few months later on June 3131 on the world of Marlow's Rift, where once again he beat the Combine in a shameful display. He popped on again in March 3132 on the world of Harrow's Sun, where prepared Combine units savaged his legionnaire battle mech. His name and bright emerald mech, however, only grew in reputation, as he then escaped the trap in which any other mech warrior would have perished. Once again, he vanished into thin air for more than a year, as he was believed to be terribly wounded or possibly even dead. Yet, lo and behold, he appeared once again in the Republic of the Sphere in the summer of 3133. In June of that year, he appeared on Quentin using a stock marauder instead of the legionnaire used in the earlier action. That action did put him on the radar of the Sphere Intelligence Service. During the months of October and November that year, the bounty hunter landed on Iraean and engaged the clan leaders of the Spirit Cats and the Steel Wolf forces, which were leading the assault against the Dragon's Fury, defeating them both. After that, both clan forces left the planet. The Dragon's Fury, if you don't know, was a group formed within the Republic of the Sphere who wanted to return all former Draconis Combine worlds to their rightful owner. At that point, he was working for Katana Tormark, and the Dragon's Fury gifted him with one of the Marauder 2 variants as payment for his service. The bounty hunter once again painted it green and called it the Noketsuna. It was during that period that the bounty hunter, still Mishi Fraser, was discovered and murdered by another person. However, even the killer could not discover if Mishi Fraser was a real name or not. The killer took on his name and identity, becoming maybe the most infamous of the bounty hunters ever. He was known as Jonathan, and he took the identity as part of a plot by his own brother Marcus to approach Katana Tormark and kill her. Katana Tormark was the leader of the Dragon's Fury. This Jonathan guy was a talented mech warrior and a fighter, and a man of many talents. Lethal with many weapons, including his bare hands, a great cook, and a master hacker. However, unfortunately, he was also a psychopath and a cold-blooded killer who enjoyed torturing and killing for fun. He would quickly murder eight more people afterwards, including three ISF agents, decapitating the last one and sending the head to the ISF director, Ramadip Bhatia. The ISF stands for Internal Security Force, and they are the spy service of the Draconis Combine. Wearing the bounty hunter armor, Jonathan infiltrated the Dragon's Fury headquarters on Prosperina, but he did not kill Katana Tormark. Instead warning her about an imminent invasion of the Republic by the warlord Sakamoto in search of her own group to destroy it and then he left. He would fight again with the Dragon's Fury in the Battle of Ancha, downing three of their fighters, although he only fought to win the trust of Katana's people and then murder her partner, Antonia Chin. However, Chin was killed in a battle before he could get to her. 
Angered by this casualty, Crawford, his superior in the group, ordered the bounty hunter to kill Warlord Sakamoto, and Jonathan left to do the assignment. After infiltrating in the Draconis Combine as a wounded aerospace pilot, he did manage to become Sakamoto's personal cook. The Warlord would die in a combat drop on the world of Saffle, poisoned by Jonathan. The bounty hunter would fight in the same battle on Saffle at the controls of a Panther battle mech after killing and replacing the actual pilot. When the original schemer, Marcus, accused Jonathan of having fallen in love with Katana Tormark, Jonathan simply killed him. After that, Jonathan continued with his killing hobby, murdering many prostitutes, all very similar to Katana in appearance, and even a cop on the planet of Ancha, and others writing a gigantic K in the space of their foreheads. The apparent murder of Katana herself would send Jonathan into a frenzy, but he would agree to an alliance offer with Batia, training with him to infiltrate in the Imperial Palace of Lufian. Jonathan would also brutally kill two clan Novacat mystics to weaken the Novacat advance in the Dragon's Fury. This act almost triggered a trial of annihilation between the Novacats and the Spirit Cat clans. A Republic detective named Richard Ferion would track his murders across the planet, but without any success because the Dragon's Fury members refused to cooperate, protecting the person they saw as one of them. Nevertheless, Jonathan knew his research and was simply playing with the detective. He left DNA at every crime scene, but it was never his. When Katana Tormark returned, alive, Jonathan left his armor and joined her army, even telling her his real name, which was Jonathan Yurei Kamimori, but he omitted his bounty hunter past. On the 15th of March 3137, while he was in the Imperial Palace on Lufian, Jonathan tried to murder Chomi Kurita, as Batya and he had agreed. But somehow Batya had taken advantage of him and did the deed himself. Realizing there was a conspiracy to murder the coordinator Vincent Kurita at the time, Jonathan would hurry to the throne room, where he would save the life of Katana Tormark before the bomb killed the coordinator and his son. After saving Katana Tormark, Jonathan left a final present to the cop who was investigating him. He sent a data crystal with a location of a glacier on the planet Misery, where Richard found the bounty hunter armor disarticulated and the full body inside, probably the body of his dead brother Marcus. As of the year 3150, the bounty hunter continues operating on his own once again, at the controls of a custom marauder. On occasion, he does bring a unit of associates though, when he has to take down bigger prey. These associates are always piloting battle mechs linked with the bounty hunter's legacy. A Marauder II, a Warhammer, a Griffin, or a Loki. This makes it very difficult for targets or observers to determine which battle mech the bounty hunter is actually piloting. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the infamous Bounty Hunter character for today. Quite a complex saga to be honest, one that might actually be good to adapt into a TV series, if such a battle deck production ever gets made. Of course, the Bounty Hunter persona continues to exist, but the lore on the characters who use the persona more or less ends here. What about you though? What are your thoughts on the infamous Bounty Hunter of Battletech? Do you know any other stories about him, or a continuation of the lore from this point on? Do share your thoughts or questions if you got any, in the comments below if you want. If you enjoyed the video, please consider clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome day! This is GDN signing out.